Hey guys, I hope you're having a great Sunday. Uh, I'm here with Taylor and we're going to continue on with the prophecy that we've been reading out of the book, The Hope of Christmas. Uh, I know you've been having a great time with uh, May May and sometimes Vinny on the show. I know I've got to do one before, uh, but now I'm joined by Taylor. He's going to be new, uh, but she's going to be reading for us in the first part. Um, it's called Portrait of a King. Okay, so... This is Isaiah 53, 1-3, and it said, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there will be no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. All right. Um, let's get started with some prayer, and then we'll dig in some more. Um, would you pray for us, Taylor? Yeah. God, thank you for this day, and thank you for all that you give us. I just pray that the words that me and Josh say, that it'll be helpful to people um, on their Sunday morning, God. I pray that you'll just be um, with us today as we dig into what this book has to say. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All righty, guys, let's get started. Um, so I'm going to read what they have in the book for us, um, what they said and uh, are discussing about the scripture we just did. It says, in these haunting verses, Isaiah painted a picture of the coming Messiah. And it's a rather unattractive picture. We read that he is a promised one would be rejected and despised, dismissed rather than accepted and believed. And our Messiah was not the first of God's people to be treated that way. During the hundred years that Noah took to build the ark, he was ridiculed, harassed, yet he remained faithful to his God. Other figures in the Bible, think of Paul, were rejected by men, as they did God's will. So Isaiah's description of the Messiah should not be a surprise to us. It seems that the more closely we follow God, the more opposition we encounter from unbelievers. And that is exactly what the prophet said God's own son would face. And so as we look back in scripture, like it says, look to Paul, you know, he was ridiculed. Um, people hated Paul because he, you know, was a bad guy, did bad things, but he gets saved as a, you know, conversion and believes in God on the road to Damascus. And now he's a worshiper, a follower of God. He becomes a, you know, a great leg mm -hmm. for the ministry. Mm -hmm. Right, um, but at the same time, people don't understand what happened. People don't understand the change, uh, and they don't like where he's come from. Mm -hmm. And so he, he faces tons of opposition, tons of trials, and it says God, God's going to do the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. I think later we're going to find out how, when Christ was born, he wasn't everything that people pictured him to be. As we paint this portrait of the King, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, like in today's time, a lot of people think the same way about Jesus. Like, they don't see him, you know, how we see them, or how we see him. They see him as something completely different, and how Christians are portrayed to be this, you know, this awful facade of us being hypocrites right. and stuff, when really we're just under grace. And um, it's kind of like a promise to us, like, people are going to see you um, not one to be attractive in your daily life, even though it's attractive to God, and that's what really matters. Right. So. Right. That's why I get out of that, um, the portrait of a king. So, uh, Next on, we're going to read, this is the fulfillment. So the first was the prophecy, this is the fulfillment. Um, this comes uh, from John 37 and 38. Uh, it says, although he had done so many signs before um, the Jews, they did not believe him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And again, that's from John 12, 37 and 38. And this, the title of this is Jesus Was Not Believed. Um, so uh, we're going to read what the, the book has for us, and then we're going to discuss it right after that. Okay. What is it about us human beings? We hear warnings, but we don't act. Or we are surprised when the warnings prove accurate. A weather report alerts us to the vicious storm fast approaching but when the clouds roll in and release their torrents we are somehow still surprised 
Jesus, however, was not surprised when Isaiah's storm warnings proved true. Centuries before Jesus walked on this earth, the prophet said that the Messiah would come but not be believed, and that proved true. The people of Jesus' day had their own idea of what the Messiah would be like, and Jesus didn't match their expectations. Although some people did believe, Jesus was, as the prophet had spoken, rejected by many, and he was not surprised. Even today, people hear but reject the truth about Jesus. As storm warnings regarding his second coming circulate, people don't seem to care. In what ways does your life reflect your awareness that Jesus will return? And in what ways does your life reveal to others the truth that Jesus is your Savior and longs to be theirs? Wow. So let's first um, break down a little bit of what it says, and then we'll answer the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, cool with you? Awesome. So he gives this picture of storm warnings, right? You guys, if you um, live in near cities or towns, sometimes they have sirens that go off and blare really loud to, to warn you, to notify you. Mm -hmm of danger, right? And a lot of times people don't evacuate, even for ones that are on news for weeks. Hey, there's a tornado, hey, there's a hurricane, tsunamis, anything natural disasters. Uh, people get warnings for, for a good bit of time to know how to evacuate, but some people still don't, right? And so he refers this to the second coming. Mm -hmm. Like our whole lives, um, you know, especially like if you live in the United States, which I know you, a lot of guys do, um, we have access to the scriptures. We have access to the Bible. There's plenty of churches. If you live in the South where we do, they said there's a church on every corner, which uh, there basically is. So there's plenty of warnings. There's plenty of um, ways to get the gospel. Even you guys right now are hearing us preach the gospel to you guys. Mm -hmm. But it's a warning. It's a, hey, get saved. Hey, know what God is telling you. Be prepared. Have your hearts and minds ready for the second coming because he is coming. You know, he said, I go into heaven to prepare a place for you that I might come down and he's going to come get us. And so we have to be ready for that. Um, and so as we prepare our hearts and minds, what are we doing? As this first question asks, it says um, right here, people don't seem to care. In what ways does your life reflect your awareness that Jesus will return? You want to answer that one? Sure. I think that through my actions and like how I treat my relationships, okay. um, James talks about, it just reminds me, don't be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Right. I can't just sit in church on Sunday and listen to the word, even though that's great, but I have to actually do what it says. And that's a daily struggle of taking up the cross, not doing what I want to do, but doing what Jesus has for me. Not because I want to earn my way up on the scale, but because I love him. You know, right. I don't do things for you just because, you know, I think you'll love me more. No, you already love me, right. but I'm doing it so I can, you know, have a relationship with you, grow with you. So right. that's my way. I want to grow my relationship with Jesus. Okay. So. And, and for me, I want to answer that one too, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I know just last Wednesday we did the lesson on Colossians 3, 9, where it talks about don't lie to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, like being honest is a huge thing. You know, now that we're married and stuff, you know, every dollar counts, right? Every penny counts and we budget and we, and so like for me, I have to be really careful not just to go, go to McDonald's and splurge on some breakfast or spend a dollar on a game or something like that because every dollar counts. And so I have to be honest and open with you, make sure our communication's in line, mm -hmm. um, that we're very clear with each other so problems don't arise. And the same way with others, mm -hmm. you know, when I talk to others and I share the gospel, I don't want to have a reputation of a liar. Or a reputation of a person that's dishonest. That's not going to be helpful. And so for me, growing is practicing the little things. Like, you know, what you say, your attitude, your um, being respectful, being courteous, being um, generous to others. You know, not not lying, telling the truth. Um, even in the tough things, especially in the little things. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I'm preparing myself is trying to be a better Christian. Uh, and be better just to impact my community and my witness. And I think that like every moment is precious and mm -hmm. Jesus tells us that and it's becoming more clear each and every day you know the the world and how you know ungodly it is like right. we know that that's you know what the Bible says is gonna happen it's not a surprise to us so every moment is very precious and you should treat it with intention I want to be intentional about everything I do 
Right. So. And even our pastor always talks about um, some people are going to be surprised. Even the Christians mm-hmm. will be surprised when we go to heaven. Mm-hmm. And like how you lived your life will be on accord and they will be announced. And you, you better be ready um, because, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to still, what am I trying to say here? Yeah. What your actions do on earth still matter. Mm-hmm. And even though you're saved, what you do and your impact and your evangelism and your witness still matters. And don't forget that because time is short. We all know that life is a vapor and a mist and it's compared to all these things which are very, very short. And so we have to be careful with the precious moments we do have. Take advantage of the time yes. we have. And so let's, let's move on to this next one and then we'll keep going. It says, and in what ways does your life reveal to others the truth that Jesus is the Savior and longs to be theirs? I think that we kind of said most of that mm-hmm. in the last one, but I think that because of our actions, mm-hmm. they see a change and that's what makes the draws them to us. Or they see our witness, or they see our, um, our words we say, or they see us doing certain things that they're like, that's different. You're happier. You're, you know, you have joy. When, t- when trials come, you respond with joy. Mm-hmm. I think that's a huge thing. Um, let's move on to the promise that he gives us. Uh, it's titled, His Faithfulness. Right. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our faith. Or of our, bleh, let me start over. Okay. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Okay. All right. I'm going to read you what uh, the book says, and then we'll go on ahead and speak what we think. It says in Hebrews 10, 22, God invites us to draw near to him with a true heart and full assurance of faith. He, our unchanging Lord, will always be faithful and his love for us will absolutely never waver. We can therefore hold fast to the hope in our all-loving, all-powerful, risen Lord, whose birth we celebrate this season and many hope that we have Christ Jesus, um, flavor? (laughs) Our words. And I guess, oh, she's talking about like, um, change our words yeah. like have an impact on mm-hmm. our words our words and and our actions so that others may see his grace and love and ask about his faithfulness may we have the opportunity this christmas to share the story of jesus birth and the reasons for our hope in him and there's some more scriptures they had you want to read those yeah psalms 119 89 through 91 says Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth, and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances, for all are your servants. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23 says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. All right, and so as we just talk about this real quick, I think the the promise that he gives is is very true, and it's impactful for me because it gives me something to rely on. Mm-hmm. That no matter how how many people change in my life, how many people come in and go out, how many people hurt me, how many people bring me joy, it doesn't matter because God's faithfulness is never going to leave you. He's never changing. He's not one day just going to get up and say, "All right." I tried. Good luck. He's not going to give up on his promises about heaven. Mm -hmm. He's not going to give up on his promises about anything that he has given us. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know that he is faithful and he is just. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he takes care of his children. He does. And I've had to learn that in my own life. Like, he's going to take care of me. It doesn't matter what different, you know, setting I'm in. He's going to take care of me and he's going to take... into consideration my my needs mm-hmm. and not necessarily my wants but my needs and he's going to meet them so if you have a need that needs to be met talk to God about it and he's going to speak to you he's going to send people your way and take advantage of that you know God yeah. speaks to us through many ways the scripture people you know sure. mentors so and and that's I think that's great that to send people your way because it's it's one thing to read scripture, it's one thing to be praying, but it's another thing also 
to have somebody come to you and say, hey, let's work through this. Or you meet a friend or one of your friends, you discuss it with your friends and they're able to, to work with you, to keep you accountable about your situation, about your problem, about your need. Mm -hmm. um, same way with you, you have to keep me accountable in a lot of things, but also you pray with me about things. Mm -hmm. We discuss things all the time and I know that if I talk to Taylor about something that she is constantly gonna be praying for me and uh, gonna be there for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I pray for you guys that you have somebody to talk to, whether it's your pastor, whether it's a, a youth minister at church, whether it's um, just another um, person in the, in the congregation that you know. Um, and, it, and if you're at home, I pray that you, that you seek out godly people in your life uh, and that you overall pray. Mm -hmm. Pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Um, don't, don't just pray when you eat. You know? mm -hmm. I pray that you have a real relationship with God, a real connection with Him. Um, and you will see the fruits that come from that because God's not done doing miracles. Mm -hmm. He's not done um, blessing you mm -hmm. and, and count your blessings. Remember what you have because mm -hmm. God is faithful and he is just. Um, so I, I pray that you had a great time um, working through us through this book, The Hope of Christmas. I know we've got a couple more left, but I think it's been a really cool book. I'm getting to learn more of these prophecies and, and hear a lot of them just over again in a different light. Um, reading the, the little passages they have with them to explain and, and help us. And I hope you guys are learning a lot through what we say, um, that God's speaking through us and that he's really helping to get across what he wants to say to you today, um, that these words wouldn't be, um, that they wouldn't go in vain, but they would go um, to the fullness of his scripture. So thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you for having Taylor. Um, I know she's done a great job, and that is very much blessed your heart as it's blessed mine. Um, thank you guys so much. Hope you have a, guys have a great and amazing Sunday. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.